In this video, I will tell you guys how powerful women are and how much women have forgotten their power. I don't believe men were supposed to be in power. I believe women were meant to lead and men were meant to protect them. Before you argue with me and say, no, no, that's not true. Well, we have gone years and years with men leading and it clearly is not working. Something needs to change. Because at the end of the day, men are like children. Well, that escalated quickly. We went from teaching women about their power to men are incompetent children who are destroying the world. I mean, there are so many nuances that describe why things go well and why things don't that it just seems like we're missing a lot of information here. Now, she did start the video with this disclaimer where she says hashtag not all men. But pro tip, if you have to write this kind of disclaimer, then you probably screwed up during the video because I certainly don't feel like you're just talking about men who keep attacking women online when you suggest that men in general are incompetent leaders and should be replaced by women. To be honest, it seems like the exact kind of rhetoric that you're complaining about. However, it's flipped. But let's start with why men are children. I'm in a long-term relationship and I can literally say men are like children. They are like a child. So a woman puts a lot of energy into like um, communicating with a man, into like even telling him how to sit, how to dress, what to do. It's like having like a child. And so I hear a lot of men say when they have a, a child with a woman that they basically leave because they get jealous of the attention that the child gets. And they, they basically say like, I don't get that attention anymore. So I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. Um, what? I listen to bad arguments all day. And this is certainly one of the most nonsensical that I've ever heard. Men are like children and therefore bad leaders because they don't sit a certain way and you don't like the clothes they wear. I don't see how this is not dismissive of all the things that men do to keep society running because you think their color coordination between their t-shirts and jeans is incorrect. Also, has anyone ever heard of the relationship where the guy's like, you're too good of a mom, so I'm leaving you. Wanting constant attention is typically a female thing, so either she is projecting or describing the problem incorrectly, and what they're actually talking about is not getting enough sexual attention after a child is born. Let's continue. Even women from a young age, they are taught to be self-sufficient. So women are, are learned to cook. They, they teach us how to clean. Anything women really, they can do on their own. Not in America, they aren't. Most people in America have the cooking knowledge of Pokimane. Should I use my hands? Wait, so it actually means use hands? Because the box says mix and blend by hand until there are no large clumps. If people knew how to cook in America, then they wouldn't eat the disgusting crap that you see on TikTok fat acceptance videos. Now, apparently, Liz grew up in Belgium, so it might be a little bit different there, but it's certainly not the case with her English-speaking audience. So anyway, this is the wizard Liz, a self-help content creator who seemingly came out of nowhere over the past year and all of a sudden started hitting views in the millions on almost every video. Most of her YouTube content is really just non-offensive advice for women, but every so often she'll throw out a video like this that is heavily lacking in nuance and makes men in general look like trash when she's really just talking about a specific group of men who are abusive losers. Not to say that I wasn't ever guilty of this when I was a newer content creator, but I'm just getting tired of all the no-nuance takes that only feed the side of the argument that matches whatever team you're on. All this does is just make everyone hate each other. Liz is on Team Women, so how she biases her opinions is going to be obvious. Anything women really, they can do on their own. A man really only adds value into their life. But statistics have shown that men cannot live without a woman and are more likely to take their own life when they do not have a partner. Meanwhile, a woman is more likely to succeed without a man. Because at the end of the day, men are like children. For one, source citation needed on both of those claims. This is a pre-recorded video and not a live stream, so you can easily put your source on screen. Second, let's go back to this disclaimer from the start of the video. I don't see how any part of the previous clip was not incredibly demeaning to men in general. And because most people don't read the stuff you put on screen and this group was never specified during the video, it seems like this disclaimer was an afterthought as some sort of PR thing. And even then, it still sounds angry because it's in all caps and it says, if you feel attacked, then yes, this applies to you. Four exclamation points. Are there any self-respecting men who don't feel attacked by that previous clip? Now let's be specific because Liz loves to use very loosely defined ideas in her videos. But after watching all 31 of her YouTube videos, I'm pretty sure that in that disclaimer, she's talking about Andrew Tate and Fresh and Fit followers. So being that in this video, her sentiment is men weak, women strong, how is she not just the reverse of those characters? 
Third, there are so many things wrong with that last clip, but let's talk about two of them. Anything women really, they can do on their own. Maybe it's just ignorance of how things work in society, but I love how all these women forget that men are the reason that you have electricity, water, and gas. They are the ones who deliver the food to the grocery store. They built that building that you're filming in. If you cannot survive without those things, then you cannot survive without men. Also, this thing she says here from the first clip of my video. I don't believe men were supposed to be in power. I believe women were meant to lead and men were meant to protect them. So then you are saying that you can't survive without a man while also saying that women get to make all the choices while men have to protect and bear all the responsibility of those choices, even if those choices are terrible. Seems like a plan for a flourishing society because removing leaders from responsibility never causes abuse of power. Now let's get to the second part of that original statement. Meanwhile, a woman is more likely to succeed without a man. Again, source citation needed. But more successful how? Financially? Maybe that's true, but there are many different ways to determine success, and material items aren't the only thing that make you successful. Personally, I would say that at least half of all women don't consider themselves successful unless they are married with kids, which is something that they cannot do without a man. Though even by her own standards, Liz would not be financially successful or famous without a man. In a different video, Liz says that her career and her source of income is social media. If I did not experience those things, I would not be where I am today because my career is literally based on giving advice based on my circumstances, based on why, what I went through. However, that success would not have been possible if a boyfriend of hers didn't fly her out to America to be around other social media types. Okay, in this video, I am going to tell you some of the reasons why your life might not be changing. It might be your environment, okay? In the beginning, when I was starting my social media journey, when I was starting off, um, if you look at uh, the country where I grew up, we don't even have big artists. Like, it's not a thing, right? We don't have big YouTubers. We don't have it. I felt really suffocated in that country because I wanted something really big. Like, I wanted it. You can date someone that is from the country that you want to live in, which is what I did. Like, I literally met my partner. He was living in this country. And he was like, Liz, uh, I want to get to know you better. Let's move you here. You know, and that's what I did. She got flewed out to help her career, and she's going to go on about how women don't need men. Also this. I had this one friend uh, who was a big influencer. I had this uh, friend of mine, and he basically uh, said to me, he, uh, so he became a millionaire at a very young age, right? Would she be such a success without the help of those two successful men? So it sounds like her arguments from the original video are a lot more emotional than they are well thought out, which means there's probably something that triggered her. A lot of women have forgotten their power. A lot of women have forgotten who they are. And to be honest, I'm quite sick and tired of it. I'm quite sick and tired of seeing women being manipulated and put against each other and everyone just acting like this is the normal way. So you see, someone has to come out and someone has to say something. Someone has to save the women. And someone has to stop this war that is going on on women. She then goes on to blame men for women being catty and doing abusive things to each other, followed by her standing up as the savior of women, to which is kind of against a piece of advice that she says a lot in her videos. Because your life is literally in your hands and in your hands only. Nobody's coming to save you. Nobody will save you. Not your mom, not your, not your spouse, not your children. Nobody will. Someone has to save the women. Not to say that she provides bad advice. Actually, outside of this video, one of Liz's redeeming qualities is that she throws out a lot of very accurate self-improvement material. Because that's how you become confident in what you're doing, and that's how you become confident in yourself. You do uncomfortable things until they get comfortable. Mom used to tell me, Liz, the friends you have is who you are. But imagine, imagine being able to choose your friends, to choose what you look at, to choose what you listen to, and then choosing the toxic one. Realize that you have the power to change things. Try something new for the next 30 days and stick to it. I do not care how small this thing is, whatever it is, if you stick to it for 30 days, you will actually prove to yourself that you can be consistent on something. This is all correct. She clearly has listened to a lot of Jordan Peterson, and she's presenting the advice in a way that women are more willing to listen to, as opposed to how Jordan Peterson would present it, which is more male-centered, so her advice has its utility. However, a lot of times she says stuff like this, which can actually be terrible advice. This is an unpopular opinion, and people are probably going to be like, oh, what are you saying? This is, this is really not good. Selfish people win at the end of the day. Now, I will say that videos like this are great for someone who is specifically in Liz's situation. 
Liz grew up with a very emotionally and physically abusive father, which led her to being a doormat in her personal relationships. Telling someone whose baseline is being super agreeable to be more selfish and think about themselves first before anyone else is perfect. However, for someone who is naturally very disagreeable and a narcissist, this is terrible advice and will actually lead them down a path of sociopathy and will cause them to treat others like crap. So as much as she provides good advice, she also provides really terrible advice that can harm people in the long term. Here's another example of that. In what way will you elevate me? If there is no way that this person will either elevate me, will make me smarter, will I will make me happier, whatever, I do not start a friendship or a relationship with that person because I do not benefit from it. And you might say, no, that's such a selfish way of thinking. Yeah, okay, and let me be selfish. This is my life. I want to make the best of my life. If, if you're valuable to me, if, if what you're going to give me is valuable, then yes, I'll give you most of my time and I'll give you lots of love as well. But if you're not, then no, it's precious to me. Don't waste my time. Wow, that is super transactional and sociopathic. Yeah, it might make you rich, but it will also turn you into a total asshole over time. You know, the people that we're friends with are not people because they just make our life like net positive. Right? That's not what friendship is. This advice from Liz just gives me the impression that Liz only sees how she can exploit a person, and people who view the world like that tend to be very unhappy. Enjoying each other's time and not being abusive should be the only baseline requirements for a friendship. In Liz's case, I'm not entirely sure that the extent that she is selfish is healthy, or if it's just an overcorrection for her past, because she often comes off as very narcissistic and not in touch with reality. And then I was thinking to myself, why is it that everyone is always obsessed with me? Basically, when I was a student, I used to work in this restaurant and I always had like uh, customers coming there. Uh, I worked behind the bar and it was so insane. Like I had women that came up to me and were like, my husband finds you mesmerizing. I just have to tell you. And I would have people constantly come up like, whoa. And people would even ask my boss, like, can she serve me? And then they were like, no, she only works behind the bar. But they were like, whoa, like, she's amazing. Like, she's so mesmerizing. So first things first. Um, I think why everyone is obsessed with me is my energy. Energy is so important. It is not about looks most of the time. Do I look good? Yes. We're not going to act like that's not true. But I'm also not the most beautiful person on earth, you know. So it is my energy that attracts people. Okay, first off, if this story is real, then those guys' wives are losers for not only letting their husbands ogle another woman in front of them, but for also walking up to tell Liz that she is more attractive than them. Second, it's not your energy, and you know that. She addresses her appearance in this video, but a 2 out of 10 couldn't walk into a room with good energy and mesmerize the room. People say that about you because you're objectively attractive, and if you weren't thin, didn't have a good figure, didn't style your hair, and didn't have good facial genetics mixing with what looks like a fair amount of plastic surgery, these people would not have talked to you like that. Now, it's one thing to have good, positive self-talk if you are naturally very negative, which is what the video was about, but lying about why you get the things you get is pathological and not good for the development of self-awareness. You wouldn't have access to so many rich guys or famous guys if you didn't look the way you do. I went on a date with a guy once. And um, this guy was very cocky. He thought that, you know, whatever, he was the, whatever, he was also very famous. Um, he literally picked me up, right? And his car, he sits inside and he's like, get in. And I looked at him and I, I keep standing outside. And he's like, what are you doing? And I, I told him, I'm not getting in. You're not opening the door for me. I'm not getting inside of the car. He's like, I won't open the door for you. I turned around. I went back home. I did not step into his car. Then he called me. He's like, what are you doing? Are you insane? Are you crazy? And then I'm like, no, no, you don't open the door for me. I don't come on a date with you. Personally, I think he should have opened the door for her. But no three out of 10 who watches Liz is rejecting a guy with power for doing that. So while we're being critical, I will say that a lot of Liz's advice is genuinely good, but it's also full of things that will lead you down a bad path emotionally, mixed in with narcissistic bragging and flexing about how attractive she is and how much money she has. Like right now, if I leave my relationship, I can take care of myself and seven children. Literally, I can live a luxury lifestyle on my own with my own money. Um, she's a great mom, a wonderful woman, a very powerful woman. 
but she was not in tune with her feminine energy. And even now, when I want to buy her a bag or a designer bag, she's like, no, 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 I don't want to keep keep your money to yourself. Like, whatever, you buy it for yourself. Whatever do you do? Listen, I am a very generous person. With my female friends, I always, like, if they want to come down here in the country where I live, I will pay for the flight. I will pay for them, like, for everything, like, their stay, everything. I don't mind paying for dinner. I know she would hate this comparison, but this is very much Andrew Tate energy. And I think that constantly bragging about how much stuff you can buy is low class. But also, I have been completely unable to figure out how Liz can afford so much stuff. She certainly can't do it with her YouTube channel. I have like double her total channel views and I bet my CPMs are higher because my comment engagement is much better than hers. Now I'm not broke, but I have to say that I cannot afford all the stuff she says she's buying. So my guess is that she's not as rich as she's saying she is and she is just bleeding money after only having like a year of financial success. And don't say she's making money from her TikTok views because nobody makes money on TikTok. The ad rev on shorts is like $20 for a million views. Unless she's doing brand deals for fashion companies, she's not that rich. For example, was she paid to show this Chanel purse? Legally in the US, she would have to disclose that. But more importantly, the vast majority of her money coming from fashion brand deals kind of puts her in a bad light because a big part of her selling point is that she's going to teach women how to be financially successful. How can she do that when she's only like 23 with just one year of success experience, including the fact that most of the reason that women are watching her is because of her genetics? You don't get brand deals for those kinds of clothes unless you look a certain way. Most of her TikTok exclusive content is her showing off her dresses and trying to be cute. When it comes to videos, that is not a display of creative talent for content creation. There's a reason she constantly mentions how attractive she is in a Kim Kardashian kind of way, and it's because tons of women idolize Kim, so there's already a huge following of women who want to look like her. There's also a reason why she talks about how many luxuries she can afford. And there's a reason why she talks about how many rich and famous people she has access to and has dated. It's because she knows that those are reasons why women are watching her. It's not her creative talent. She has about as much creative talent as a family vlog channel. All of her content is just stream of consciousness story times with no production value and slight editing, which is incredibly easy to do. Tons of women do the exact same type of content, and the only ones who I've ever seen that are actually successful with this are girls who were born attractive and have access to luxury. As a role model, and as somebody who is absolutely obsessed with herself, I've decided to give the people some suggestions on how to practice self-love. First of all, say some affirmations to yourself, like, I love to go outside. I'm so in touch with reality. I'm not dating that one guy anymore. Second, wear something that makes you feel empowered. It might be a beautiful gown, a lingerie set. And lastly, but not leastly, the most natural way to practice self-love is to or in other more TikTok friendly words, vibe with yourself. That was actually pretty accurate. But let's get back to more of Liz complaining about men. And there's this narrative going on online of like, oh, women don't want to be mothers anymore. Uh, women don't want to like uh, create families anymore. It's their fault that we don't have strong families. No, women don't want to be single mothers anymore. Women are tired of raising kids on their own because you guys just get up and leave when it's convenient for you. It's normal for you guys to leave because guys are selfish. Men are selfish. It's normal. Then stop dating sociopaths. It's not normal for men to just peace out and leave the minute a child is born. That's what assholes do. And while yes, it takes two to tango and he bears some of the responsibility, the way to actually protect yourself is not to blame men, it's to figure out how to date guys who aren't like that. And the big problem with all the suggestion that women should be focused on rich guys is that a ton of rich and famous guys are successful because they are sociopaths, addicts, and terrible people who will step on everyone in their way. By talking about how wonderful it is to live in luxury and date rich people, by percentage, you are literally funneling tons of women towards the exact kinds of guys who will cheat on them and leave them. A mom, a mom has a bond with a child. She cannot leave. No, that's this false narrative that you guys created. There's lots of women that also want to leave. They don't want to raise a child on their own because it's so hard. But they can't leave because you guys will shame her. And when that father leaves and you have a daughter that, that is with an absent father, then men are so quick to look at her and blame her and say, Oh, she is the way she is because she has daddy issues. But then you have a man, right? And that man grew up without a mother. People will say, poor guy, the mom left. What an evil mom. So basically, what does this conclude? 
the man is never held accountable for his actions. It's always the woman's fault. Liz does a terrible job here of specifying and providing context for what she's referring to. So I'm going to do it for her based on what I think she's talking about after watching a ton of her content. She's referring to alpha male podcasts and content like Fresh and Fit or Just Pearly Things that always find a way to give women 100% of the fault for everything, even in cases where it's obvious that men should be at least 10% at fault. Ironically, that's exactly what they accuse women of doing, but I digress. Liz is correct here. But the solution isn't to give men 100% of the blame. The solution is to be fair and nuanced. Otherwise, you aren't actually helping people. You're just fueling hatred. Don't get me started on daddy issues because I have seen so many men suffering so much more from daddy issues than women have. Men cannot deal with their emotions. And that's why you guys rape, kill, and do anything that is not normal. You guys created this narrative for yourself of be a man, be strong, go to work, be a man, whatever, provide. And then today you guys are complaining that the suicide rate is so high for a man. But why complain when that is the system that you built for yourself? You see, and then you guys complain that women aren't feminine anymore. Women don't want to stay home. Women want to go out and work and make their own money. But you guys can't provide for them. Men are so stingy. I keep having to correct people on this one because men as a whole did not create this system that we're in. At least for America, what happened was is that some people fought in a war 250 years ago. They got together and created a few decent rules. And then over the years, a bunch of sociopaths and psychopaths took over and started screwing everybody. Guys are having trouble providing for a family because massive multinational corporations like BlackRock, combined with the Federal Reserve, tripled and quadrupled the price of rent and mortgages in a short amount of time. Did you know that a cashier at a store in California used to be able to afford a basic house just a few decades ago? Now you have to make like six figures just to afford a basic house in California. Don't forget the Trans-Pacific Partnership that shipped all of our factory jobs to our enemies in China, which not only removed a lot of good-paying jobs that used to support families of five on a single income, but also destroyed America's independence. Then there's all that propaganda calling housewives losers and working women heroes, which was probably a lot more about increasing the tax base and overworking parents so mom can't join the PTA group that keeps an eye on what's being taught in schools, which is great because then the government can teach kids all sorts of radical ideas while their parents are too busy at work to pay attention. And don't get me started on how you don't actually own important stuff even when they're paid off, like your car or your house, because of car registration and property taxes. Men didn't do that. A group of assholes with power that includes men and women did that. What would really be great is if we stopped fighting each other and instead focused our attention on the people who are actually harming us and making us unhappy, so we can create a system where they can no longer do that. Men love to humble us. No, you're not good enough. No, 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 you're not all that. No, 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 you're not special. Honey, listen to me. Do not listen to these idiots. I think women should start using being a woman to their advantage. And I think men should go ahead and heal themselves. Men think that like, oh, women, their standards are too high these days, whatever. No, we've realized how much you've manipulated us. And now women, a lot of women make their own money. So when you sit at our table, we ask you, what do you bring to the table? And see, this is where a lot of men lack. Because you guys don't don't like uh, work on your emotions. You guys don't do any like self discovery or self healing because it's cringy. It's not cool. Instead of saying, "Hey, dude, I need therapy. I need to go to therapy because I need to get my emotions out." No, you guys keep your emotions stuck and do the craziest, most horrible things to women because you want to take your emotions out on someone you want to take your hate out on someone let's come down to the fact that you guys just hate yourself okay but you're taking the actions of what some men do and applying it to men in general which is wrong understand though that judging from this video here liz went through some pretty terrible things when she was a child but that is not normal at least in america the vast majority of men will not physically abuse you and not saying that liz identifies as a feminist but feminists and the woke mob selling this narrative of all men or most men are toxic and abusive doesn't help anyone. It just fear mongers people and creates weird situations like this. I'm literally shaking right now because I just had a man approach me in a parking lot and it went fine. And I'm going to tell you why it went fine and how to address it because it was in a book I read and this is how you're supposed to address it. But it scared me. I'm literally, I'm literally shaking. So this guy, I am a alone with my son by myself, a woman and a male approached me in a parking lot. He's excuse me, miss. And I don't know 
why in the hell he was approaching me or what he was trying to do. And before he, I mean, he was probably 30 feet from me when he said, excuse me, ma'am. And I turned around and I literally yelled at him and I said, do not approach me. And he like immediately started going in the other direction. And I just kept saying it over and over and over. I said, do not approach me. Do not approach me. And he of course like got like, what the F did it? Like he started cussing and yelling like, what, what's your problem? And I say, you do not approach women in a parking lot. I just kept saying, do not approach me. You do not approach women in a parking lot. Like yelling it. No male, no male should ever approach a woman in a parking lot, ever should no male should ever approach a woman in a parking lot and if a male does approach you you need to turn around and use the strongest voice that you can possibly use with them don't be polite they need to literally screw off no male should be approaching you in a parking lot were her actions appropriate i don't know because she didn't provide enough details what did the guy look like was it a weird looking homeless guy or was it a guy saying excuse me ma'am you dropped your wallet that nuance matters, and the problem with this video is that she is saying that if any man approaches you in a parking lot full of cars in broad daylight, then you are to scream at them and make them look like a predator, even if they are well-intentioned. This is fear-mongering. A much better take would be, hey guys, understand that men are much bigger than women, and when you approach women when they're alone, it can make them scared. So use good judgment and only approach a woman you don't know when she is isolated if there is a very good reason to. No one would have had a problem with that. It's the fear-mongering that got her all of the negative feedback when this TikTok went viral. And it's in a situation where I'm actually very suspicious of her story. Listen to this part again. I'm literally shaking right now because I just had a man approach me in a parking lot. You were just approached and you're shaking from the event? Are you literally in the same parking lot that this happened? You mean you were willing to scream at this man because you were scared, yet you felt safe enough to sit in your car with your kid a few feet away from the guy and film a TikTok video? How do we know that she wasn't misreporting this event for clout, just like those gym girls who falsely accused those guys of creeping on them? I don't know how I ended up with 50,000 new friends, but I am so happy that all of you guys are here. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Again, very suspicious. She did do a follow-up video where she said the guy was like asking people for money or something that got 100k views, but that doesn't excuse the video with 2.6 million views that accuses all men of being predators if they ever dare step anywhere near a woman in a parking lot. Men are tired of this treatment. Because my general perception about men and aggressiveness is that people overestimate the percentage of men who are aggressive. Thanks, Dr. K. Recently, I've been watching a lot of Dr. K while I drive and work out, so he's my hype man for this video, especially because he's a licensed psychiatrist. But it's really shocking how so many people will hold such strong beliefs based on zero evidence and zero research just because someone in the media said it. They love to paint this narrative of, oh, if a woman has children and if a woman has like a family, that's when she will be the happiest, whatever. Statistics have shown that women without children are more happy than with children. And you know why? Because literally, look, I believe in unconditional love and I believe like having a child is like a certain kind of love that you will never ever experience in your life. But my mom has five children, yeah? I called my mom up and I said, mom, did you get happy because of your children? Just because you have children? She's like, yeah, yeah, blah, blah. Then I said, mom, are you happy? She said, I'm not, no. That's not even the idea that you originally proposed. You can be happier than you would be without kids and still be unhappy. She's basically arguing that her existence makes her mom more miserable, which is a weird flex. Also, where are these stats that say women are happier without kids? What data says this? Happiness is so subjective in this situation that I can't imagine how you would even accurately measure it. Seriously, I watched you spend all this time talking about how strong women are, how educated your mom is, and how prepared you were as a child, but she didn't teach you how to cite a resource? And it's not like this is a rare occurrence for Liz. This is the third time in a single video that she's brought up a claim based on stats that she has seen and has not shown the evidence. This is lying, and this is a pre-recorded video. You can easily edit that alleged study on screen. Because of stuff like this, we need to change the culture to a place where if someone says, a study said this, and they don't show the study or give any reference to it, they are brutally shamed and called liars for it. Because no one can determine the validity of what you're saying without actually seeing the study. Let's come down to the fact that you guys just hate yourself. And you know, it's funny to me because uh, a lot of people say like, why do men love mean women? It's not that they love mean women. They love women that reinforce the hate that they already have for themselves. 
So those women, they just tell them, yeah, I hate you too just like you hate yourself then you have the good woman that does everything for this guy and the guy will feel like she's fake she's not being honest with me so let me find someone that's being mean to me because at least she's honest the question is why the why uh, a lot of like uh men love toxic women yeah because there's a lot of toxic men again that's not men in general those are abuse victims connecting with something familiar also, is it not the fault of the woman as well for being toxic here? Did I not just listen to you crapping on the manosphere for attributing all the blame to a single party? For how much you don't like these people, you sure are doing a lot of the same bad things. Let's talk about the alpha males. So the alpha males that have, all have a, a microphone and a podcast now. What is that? How much more feminine can you be than to gossip all day on a podcast and talk like, talk shit with your girls? Okay, that was funny because it's kind of true. A ton of these podcasts are like that. But despite her funny quip and despite her criticisms of these shows, she does a lot of the same negative things they do, like constantly brag about how financially successful she is. She makes statistical claims without showing her evidence. She plays victim. Yes, I did say that because the alpha male podcasts frequently play the victim card and say poor men a lot of times to justify cheating instead of actually trying to problem solve just like feminists do. And Liz comes off as very narcissistic, and I don't think she realizes it. Statements like this are what make me think that. See, I'm the person, I don't like to get disrespected, but i also not the kind of person that will get offended by anything and everything constantly, and oh, you have to walk around eggshells. No, I'm really chill, you know? But I have my boundaries, and you will not cross my boundaries. Okay, well now after you said that, if I hang out with you, I'm going to be constantly worried about accidentally stepping on one of your triggers. So I don't feel like you're laid back because a laid back person wouldn't say something like that. I mean, does this sound like a forgiving person? And I am the kind of person, if you're my friend, if I am good and if I get rich, you will get rich. Literally. Like, I am so giving and generous. But I, the same way that I love, I can switch as well. If you betray me, you're out. I don't care. You're out. There's one disrespect, you're out. I do not care how many years I've known you, how close you were, how much you know about me, you're out. There's a difference between being a doormat and being so vindictive that you would throw away a years-long friendship over a single offense. That is the demeanor of a very serious person and not really someone you can feel relaxed around or feel like you aren't constantly walking on eggshells around. However, I do think she is morally better than someone like Andrew Tate because she calls out stuff like this. There's literally men right now that have uh, got this big platform that are literally saying, I hate women. Women deserve to be cheated on. Women deserve to be lied to. And these men are praising them like gods. Yeah, that's disgusting behavior. And I can't believe so many manosphere types are saying that cheating is a good thing if you have money after spending years crapping on feminists for articles like this one. So I don't think she's morally on the same level, and I like that she recommends therapy a lot. However, I do have a problem with her doing a lot of the same things that the people she criticizes do. Also relevant, can we stop the victim pissing contest? And it's not just woke people who do this. So I, I've worked with people who are very privileged and very wealthy. I've worked in jails. I've worked with kids. You know, I've worked at places where kids run away on a routine basis. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. And what I've come to realize is that no amount of privilege protects you from suffering. It really shows high moral standards when you invalidate someone's suffering or blame them for everything and give them 100% of the fault because you think your suffering was worse. So many groups are doing that. We seem to be gatekeeping suffering more and more and more, right? We're, we, we allow some people to suffer and, and then we get into this like weird like contest about who's the most, who's allowed to suffer the most. And, and so this is where I think at the end of the day, comparing suffering, I think, is a waste of everyone's time. It's not that anyone deserves to suffer more than you are. I think the right move is to like, you know, if stuff sucked for you, it sucked for you. And also, like, if things are worse for other people, like, have compassion for them and try to help them. And I, yeah. I don't know why is like societally we've started entangling those two. Like, if my life is bad, then I, I it's weird. It's like. I don't need to give compassion to others. And if my life is good, then I don't deserve to have compassion myself. 
It's really weird. I just don't think it makes any sense. I think, you know, someone's life can be terrible and you should be compassionate towards them, irrespective of how bad your life is. It really just seems like people are looking for any way they can to crap on and one up the other side. Watch how that plays out in your personal relationships, by the way, when your first instinct in a public argument is to call your opponent stupid instead of listening to what they have to say. If you're doing that in front of people where you can be judged, then you're definitely doing that in private. I'm just very tired that everything has to be like Fox News versus CNN, where it's like, if the president is on their political team, they will never say, man, isn't that stuff the president did messed up? Relationship fidelity is a big deal on the right, yet tons of them will look past Trump cheating on his wife. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, the left will completely ignore the fact that Biden spends more time eating ice cream than he does actually being president. Now, I'm not saying that you need to disown these people for having a bad side, but if we keep ignoring our own faults just so we can point the finger at someone else, then none of this will change or get better. If you hate that mainstream media has the ability to rally people to support obviously false allegations in cases like Kyle Rittenhouse or Brett Kavanaugh, then, well, the reason they can get away with that is because you aren't listening to the grievances of the other side and taking a nuanced approach with your arguments. So your opponents will run to the people who do listen to them, even if those people are only listening so they can manipulate them. The biggest way we can stop stuff like this is to actually spend time thinking about and taking other people's ideas into consideration. Until people start doing that, nothing will truly get solved, and all that will happen is that the power will just change hands. More importantly, ask yourself a simple question. Before you accuse someone of doing a behavior that you don't like, ask yourself if you do that behavior too. Because projection is a hell of a thing, and we will very commonly notice bad things in other people because we are well-trained at doing those things ourselves. Also, if you're smart with this, you can actually turn projection into a positive thing because you can use it as a method of finding your faults. Anyway, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.